Lesson 58, a spot of bother. We'll talk about a burglary in this text. Now first, listen and try to answer this question. What did the old lady find when she got home? The old lady was glad to be back at the block of flats where she lived. Her shopping had tired her and her basket had grown heavier with every step of the way home. In the lift, her thoughts were on lunch and a good rest. But when she got out at her own floor, both were forgotten in her sudden discovery that her front door was open. She was thinking that she must reprimand her home help the next morning for such a monstrous piece of negligence. When she remembered that she had gone shopping after the home help had left, and she knew that she had turned both keys in their locks. She walked slowly into the hall and at once noticed that all the room doors were open. Yet following her regular practice, she had shut them before going out. Looking into the drawing room, she saw a scene of confusion over by her writing desk. It was as clear as daylight then that burglars had forced an entry during her absence. Her first impulse was to go around all the rooms looking for the thieves. But then she decided that at her age it might be more prudent to have someone with her. So she went to fetch the porter from his basement. By this time her legs were beginning to tremble. So she sat down and accepted a cup of very strong tea while he telephoned the police. Then her composure regained. She was ready to set off with the porter's assistance to search for any intruders who might still be lurking in her flat. They went through the rooms, being careful to touch nothing, as they did not want to hinder the police in their search for fingerprints. The chaos was inconceivable. She had lived in the flat for thirty years and was a veritable magpie at hoarding, and it seemed as though everything she possessed had been tossed out and turned over and over. At least sorting out the things she should have discarded years ago was now being made easier for her. Then a police inspector arrived with the constable and she told them of her discovery of the ransacked flat. The inspector began to look for fingerprints, while the constable checked that the front door locks had not been forced, thereby proving that the burglars had either used skeleton keys or entered over the balcony. There was no trace of fingerprints, but the inspector found a dirty red bundle that contained jewellery, which the old lady said was not hers. So their entry into this flat was apparently not the burglar's first job that day, and they must have been disturbed. The inspector then asked the old lady to try to check what was missing by the next day, and advised her not to stay alone in the flat for a few nights. The old lady thought he was a fussy creature, but since the porter agreed with him, she rang up her daughter and asked for her help in what she described as a little spot of bother. So what did the old lady find when she got back home? She found that the burglars had broken into her flat and ransacked it. Remember that the previous lesson is a first-person narrative. This text, then, is a third-person narrative. It tells us about the event of the burglary from the beginning to the end, according to the time sequence. But from the point of view of the third person, which is the old lady. Yet it is not exactly a story, for there is no plot, no ups and downs, no beginning and no end. We don't know much about the old lady's background, and by the end of the story, we don't know who the burglars are either. But the focus of the text is not so much on an objective description of the scene of the crime as on the old lady herself, or rather on her reaction throughout the event. Okay, now let's first look at some language points. 
The old lady was glad to be back at the block of flats. Block here means building, so block of flats means apartment building. For example, they lived in the same block of flats, which is actually an apartment building. Notice apartment building is more an American usage, while block of flats is more British. In this example, however, block means something different. They lived on the same block. Notice the difference in preposition. On the same block, referring to the same area between rows. 这里 block 是街区 She must reprimand her home help, so we can guess that home help here refers to a person. Home help means somebody who is paid to help with the cleaning of home. For such a monstrous piece of negligence, monstrous means very bad, very wrong. For example, it's monstrous to charge that much for a single pair of shoes. It's too bad. It's wrong to charge that much. It was a monstrous injustice to treat a foreigner as an inferior person. Monstrous here in this context means it was very unfair. A monstrous piece of negligence. Negligence means carelessness, inattentiveness. For example. Her mother accuses her of negligence unless she phones home every day. The doctor who failed to diagnose the illness is an instance of negligence, not attentive on his work. Yet, following her regular practice, regular practice means common practice, usual practice, 惯常的做法 Let's look at one more example. What can Chinese companies learn from Japanese business practices? Practice here means the way of operating business. Traditional religious practices are disappearing in many parts of the world. So practice here refers to the religious worshiping practice. So notice in all of these examples, practice means way of doing things. Follow some practice means here in the text to do things as her usual habit. She saw a scene of confusion. Scene, 一个情景 The basic meaning of scene refers to a particular part in a film or in a play. For example, do you remember the first scene of the film? 电影的第一个场景 We can also use "scene" to describe the event in our real life, which resembles the scene in a film. 场面 for example, there were scenes of great joy when the soldiers were reunited with their families. Scenes of great joy, 欢乐的场面 His fingerprints were found at the scene of the crime. At the scene of crime. Refers to the very spot where the crime is committed. 犯罪现场 It was as clear as daylight. As clear as daylight means very certain, very clear. It's a fixed expression. We can also say as clear as day. For example, it is as clear as daylight. Or as clear as day that the Democratic Party is going to win the election. So this fact is very clear, very certain now. I told you as clear as daylight that I am leaving tomorrow, not day after. I told you clearly enough. As clear, there are other sayings in English. For example, as clear as a bell, or As clear as mud. Let's look at the examples to see what they mean. From the back of the cinema came a child's voice, as clear as a bell. I want to go home. So, as clear as a bell is usually used to describe a voice 
or sound, very clear. His instructions about how to get to his place were as clear as mud. We all know that mud is not clear at all. So if you say something is as clear as mud, you mean that it is not clear at all. Very difficult to understand. Burglars had forced an entry during her absence. Forced an entry means they had broken into the house by either breaking a door or a window. Let's look at more examples to see how to use false in this sense. I forgot my key, so I had to force a window. So here it means I had to enter the room by breaking a window. The police forced open the door because nobody had answered. Force open the door means they entered through the door by force. She forced her way through the crowd. Pushing people aside and ignoring their complaints, force one's way, 挤出一条路来 It might be more prudent to have someone with her. Prudent is a slightly formal word, meaning cautious, not rash, able to foresee. It's closer to wise. For example, it would be prudent to read the contract properly. Before signing it, to fetch the porter from his basement, you might know the usual meaning of porter, which is somebody who helps to carry luggage at railway stations or airports. But here, porter means the doorman, or somebody who takes care of a building at its entrance to help visitors. Notice. Doorman is often used in American English, while porter is more often used in British English. Then her composure regained. Composure means calmness and control. For example, you may be nervous, but try not to lose your composure during the interview. Try not to lose your self-control and calmness. Its verbal form is compose. For example, she finally stopped crying and composed herself. She finally calmed herself down. He took a few seconds to compose his thoughts before he started the speech. Took a few seconds to organize his thoughts. Her composure regained. Regain means possess something again. Here it means that her calmness was resumed. Let's look at more examples. The government has regained control of the capital from rebels. 恢复了对首都的控制 She finally regained her self-control. Regain, notice, often goes together with control. Any intruders who might still be lurking in her flat. Intruder refers to somebody who goes into some place without being invited or permitted. Here it refers to the criminal. Let's look at more examples. I felt like an intruder when I first moved into my host family, which means I felt like not a part of the family. Intruders had entered the house through the chimney. Intruders here refer to the criminals. Who might still be lurking in her flat? Lurk means wait or move secretively in order to attack, or exist in hiding. For example, why are you lurking about in the corridor? Why are you hiding there? There seemed to be something else lurking behind his official statement. So we can also use "lurk" to describe something in hiding. They didn't want to hinder the police in their search for fingerprints. Hinder somebody in something means prevent somebody from something. 
for example. Her lack of experience has hindered her in her efforts to get promoted. We can also use hinder somebody from doing something. For example, I don't want to hinder you from getting the job done on time. The chaos was inconceivable. Chaos means confusion and disorder. For example, snow and ice have caused chaos on the roads. Confusion in traffic. Or, ever since our secretary was on leave, the office has been in a state of total chaos. A state of can also be omitted, saying has been in total chaos. Its adjective form is chaotic. Was inconceivable. Inconceivable means unthinkable or unimaginable. For example, another terrorist attack in the same place is almost inconceivable. Or, it would be inconceivable for her to change her mind. Which means, it was very difficult to imagine that she would change her mind, indicating that it was quite impossible. She was a veritable magpie at hoarding. Veritable means exactly like something. It's usually used to describe a kind of comparison to something more interesting or more exciting, and sometimes it's used to exaggerate. For example, when I came back from holiday, my garden had become a veritable jungle. 我的花园几乎成了一个丛林。Magpie, 它基本的意思是喜鹊 but when you use magpie to describe a person, you mean a collector. A magpie at hoarding, hoarding in comparison with collecting, emphasizes that collecting a lot of things, a collecting a large amount. For example, because people expected prices to rise rapidly. They started to hoard goods. 囤积物品 Putting together, she was a veritable magpie at hoarding. Means she was very much like somebody who loved to hoard things. Everything she possessed had been tossed out. Let's look at more examples of toss. He tossed the ball quickly to his brother. 很快的把球传给他的兄弟。Let's toss a coin to see who will go first. 掷硬币。He was tossing and turning all night. Tossing and turning is a fixed expression. 辗转反侧。At least sorting out the things she should have discarded years ago was now being made easier. To sort out things means. To put things in order, for example, sort out any books you want to throw away and give them to me. Sort out means to search for any books you don't want and put them together. They failed to sort out the computer system's problems. Sort out can also mean to deal with a problem. The old lady thought he was a fussy creature. Creature so can be used to describe a person. Let's look at more examples of using creature. Living creatures, 生物 We have learned about aliens, who can be called creatures from outer space. Or as the text goes, using creature to describe a person, she is such a strange creature, or she is such a weak. Creature, or any other adjectives you'd like to add, cute creature or charming creature. She described as a little spot of bother, which is actually the title of this text. A little spot of bother means a small trouble, or a little bit of difficulty. Look at more examples. I got into a spot of bother with my boss. When I was late again this morning, 
I got into a little bit of difficulty. There was a spot of bother in town last night. There was a little bit of trouble. This text is a narrative of burglary. In order to keep the style consistent, it does not use dialogues, but uses a lot of indirect speech. 间接引语 For example. The inspector then asked the lady to try to check what was missing by the next day, and advised her not to stay alone. In direct speech, it should be, "Please check what was missing. You'd better not stay alone in the flat." This is a standard way of changing direct speech into indirect one, combining the speech with appropriate verbs like "ask" or "advise." But there are other ways of integrating speeches in the narrative. For example, a dirty red bundle that contained jewelry, which the old lady said was not hers. In direct speech, it should be, "And the old lady said it is not mine." So this sentence combines the speech with the sentence structure by subordinating it into a clause. So that the sentence structure is more tightly connected. There's one more example. Asked for help in what she described as a little spot of bother. So this sentence rewrites her speech into the sentence, and makes what she described as an insertion. But we know at the same time that a little spot of bother was the lady's original wording. I don't know whether you share my feelings or not, but when the constable and the inspector came into the scene, and when they were inferring from various clues, they sort of remind me of a detective story. I'm sure that all of you have heard of the name Sherlock Holmes, Fourmosu. He is, of course, one of the most representative and impressive detectives, and he is, don't forget. British, but he is fascinating not only to British readers, but to readers all over the world. I guess it's the sharp observation and an acute mind that fascinate all of us. Okay, so much on this topic. I'll see you next time.